Hello everyone, welcome to Positron Academy and today's topic of discussion is on radio pharmaceuticals and these are the contents for today's presentation. Um, we'll talk about radio pharmaceuticals, we'll talk about the basic properties of an ideal radio pharmaceutical in details. So before we go and start this presentation, we have to ask one basic question and that is what is a radio pharmaceutical? So radio pharmaceuticals are radioactive compound which are used for the diagnosis and therapeutic treatment of human diseases. I am repeating once again, radio pharmaceuticals are radioactive compound which are used for the diagnosis and therapeutic treatment of human diseases. And these radio pharmaceuticals have minimum pharmacological effect because they are used in trace quantities. As you can see from here, there's a graph between dose and response of a drug. And when the drug is used in trace quantity, it has a minimum pharmacological effect. So we administered this pharmaceutical to the to the patient to get some information out of it based on what tracer or what radio pharmaceutical we are injecting. So before we inject the pharmaceutical or radio pharmaceutical, it has to comply with some basic conditions, and these are the pharmaceutical. It must be sterile and it must be pyrogen free. And this pharmaceutical has to go through all quality control measures which are required for a conventional drug. So it must be sterile and it must not have any pyrogen, it must be pyrogen free. So we have multiple names for radio pharmaceutical, we can either call it radio tracer or radio diagnostic agents. And these are all same for radio pharmaceutical but not for radio chemicals. Radiochemicals and radio pharmaceuticals are not equal. Radiochemicals are not usable for administration because they lack sterility and they are non pyrogenic in nature. So that's why radiochemicals are not usable for administration in humans. So now let's spend some quality time understanding the architecture of the radio pharmaceutical. So we can see from the uh, pictorial diagram over here, we can see that the radio pharmaceutical is, has two components that is the radionucleate or the radio metal or and the vector molecule or the pharmaceutical and this vector molecule is specific for a defined target or for a defined biological process and we what we are doing basically we have linked this radio metal to this vector molecule in such a way wherever the vector molecule uh, goes it takes along the radio uh, nucleate with it and based on the property of the radionuclide we can either use this vector molecule as an diagnostic agent or we can use this vector molecule as a therapeutic agent or we can use as a combination of diagnostic and a therapeutic agent. So the usefulness of this pharmaceutical is dictated by the characteristics of both the radio metal or radionuclide and the pharmaceutical. So and I have already mentioned that based on the property of decay of the radionucleate whether it decays by emitting in gamma ray or x-ray. So if it emits by if it decays by emission of an electromagnetic radiation like gamma rays or x-ray it can be used for uh, it is used for diagnostic applications and uh, if it decays by emitting alpha particles or beta particles then these pharmaceutical uh, is being used for the treatment of uh, malignant uh, diseases uh, by which these alpha particles uh, were, uh, being high LET particles it deposit energy to the cells uh, uh, thereby causing uh, molecular lesions, double strand breaks and so on and used to destroy the cells and uh, and uh, and uh, the in vivo distribution of the radionuclide in the whole body or in specific parts of the body can be detected by this group of instrumentation or group of these uh, imaging modalities. So like SPEC-CT, PET-CT, uh, 
pet mart or the combination of pets pet city this can be used to image the in vivo distribution of the uh, retinoculite in the whole body or in uh, specific parts of the body so what actually goes this uh, this uh, retinoculite it decays by emitting gamma radiation or gamma rays and this gamma radiation falls on the detectors of this imaging modality and it causes a series of events which goes further starting from physical events to electronic things and computational things which finally gets you a image and which Im and the image says you about the in vivo distribution of the tracer in the body Apart from these, this emitted radiation can also be detected intraoperatively using a small detector. Ex uh, example, we can see this, uh, this small detector which is being used to detect this intraoperatively uh, using a small detector. And apart from this, the radiation emitted by the retinoculite can be quantified ex vivo in body fluids like in blood or feces by gamma counter. So. Uh, uh, we have we can see a wide variety of things we can do from imaging to uh, detecting to counting all these things can be done by means of detectors so now we will spend some time understanding the basic concept in designing a radio pharmaceutical we, we are not diving inside how a pharmaceutical is, is being designed but we are trying to understand some basic concept which remains constant in the designing of a radio pharmaceutical the first is if I want to uh, say image a defined organ so I have to choose a pharmaceutical which it which localizes preferentially to the given organ or it participates in the physiological function of the organ so first step is a pharmaceutical is chosen on the basis of its preferential localization in a given organ or its ability or its participation in the physiological function of the organ secondly this pharmaceutical is being tagged to a radionucleide such that after administration of the radio pharmaceutical radiations are emitted from the uh, from the radio pharmaceutical and being detected by the detector which can be used for imaging for detection for counting or whatever purpose we are interested to use this for and because of this all these um, designing part choosing a pharmaceutical choosing a radionuclide uh, ligating both of them or tagging both of them so and detecting by and the and detection of the gamma radiations by detectors we can get the morphological structure or the physiological function of the organ and it can be it can be assessed from this and moreover most important factor is that the pharmaceutical of choice it should be safe and non-toxic for human administration it should not be like that you have the image of the patient but the patient is no more so it should be safe and non-toxic for human administration so that's again the same diagram about the basic architecture of a radio pharmaceutical which comprises of vector and a radio metal linked by a linker and this vector is specific for a defined target and most vectors they have what we call a saturable kinetics and that's the main reason why we have to use tracer in tracer quantities to avoid saturation of the target because if, if there is saturation there can be some potential side effects too so and the retention of the vector molecule to the target can be a reversible interaction by means of affinity based receptor interaction can by means of transporter binding or by means of uh, binding to misfolar proteins and these all, all and these all are governed by equilibrium uh, association and dissociation so after binding of this uh, vector to the target the, tar the the vector can be internalized and retained in the cell and which you call as pseudo irreversible kinetics and the vector molecule can be different things as i mentioned before that it can be uh, it can be any small molecule or it can be a substrate for the enzyme for example fdg that substrate for the enzyme hexokinase so once fdg is inside the cell hexokinase exon fdg and it phosphorylates fdg to fdg6 phosphate and once this fdg gets phosphorylated it cannot cross the cell and we can say the reaction product is trapped in the target cell and that's how FDG works so the vector molecule can also be an, an substrate for an enzyme 
or the binding of the vector molecule to, to the target tissue can be driven by tissue microenvironment. For example, hypoxia, example F18, FMIS, so are those tracers which uh, are being used for uh, hypoxic imaging or uh, because of oxidative stress or transmembrane potential, the tracer can also be accumulated preferentially to that site. So this factor molecule or the pharmaceutical can bind, can go to the target site because of multiple process as I mentioned before and also tissue microenvironment plays a great role in the tracer distribution to the target uh, site. Example hypoxia and oxidative stress and transmembrane potential and, micro, my, and mitochondrial transmembrane potential. So now we'll spend some time understanding the properties of ideal radio pharmaceutical and these are the properties what an ideal radio pharmaceutical must have. First is it must be easily available. It must have short effective half life. It um, uh, uh, and thirdly, particle emission, fourthly, decay by electron capture or internet transition, and fifth, it must have high target to non-target activity. So now we explain each uh, each um, each point in detail. So first is we explained about the fact that the pharmaceutical must be easily available. So it should be easily produced. It should be inexpensive, and it should be readily available in any nuclear medicine facility. And when a radio pharmaceutical uh, is being produced easily, uh, the uh, there is a reduced cost of production. So and also when you go for complicated methods of production of radionuclides, it also lead to increase in the cost of radio pharmaceutical. For example, we can see the cost of preparation of a uh, generator based pharmaceutical like technetium level MDP is very less. Whereas the same, uh, whereas for FDG production, uh, the cost is quite higher because you need a defined other uh, defined cyclotron facility to uh, to produce F18 from O18 water. Uh, once you bombard a beam of protons to O18 water, it produces uh, it produces F18, and this F18 is then processed further to make FDG. So as the method of production get complicated, the cost also keep on increasing. And thirdly, the geographical distance between the user and the supplier also limits the availability of short half-life radio pharmaceuticals. So these are three points about uh, easily easy availability. And secondly, the radio pharmaceutical must have short effective half-life. So when you talk about radio pharmaceutical excretion from the body, so the loss of radio pharmaceutical is not because of a single factor, it's because of two factors. First is is because of the decay of the pharmaceutical itself because retinuclide has a defined half-life so it keep on decaying and because of decaying phenomena there is loss of pharmaceutical uh, activity from the body apart from these the biological elimination of the pharmaceutical is also uh, is also responsible for the loss of radioactivity so the net or effective rate of loss of radioactivity is what we call as is, is defined by the decay constant of both the physical half-life and the biological half-life. So that is lambda E equals to lambda E means lambda e, lambda effective half-life is equal to lambda physical half-life and lambda biological half-life and that's the equation for in terms of the T halves. So uh, now the question is definitely uh, the pharmaceutical uh, uh, should have a re uh, should have a relatively shorter effective half-life and we should not be longer than the time required to complete the study in question. And the time to start the imaging of the tracer, it varies with different studies, depending on the in vivo, in vivo pharmacokinetics of the tracer. So faster the tracer accumulates to the target, the sooner the imaging can be started and vice versa. So if the, if the tracer accumulates to the target in a, in, a, in, a, in a fast fashion, then we can start the imaging uh, sooner. And if the accumulation of the tracer to the, to, to the target is, is, is late, then the imaging acquisition is late. And the duration of imaging, it depends also on the activity or it depends on the amount of activity. So higher the amount of activity administered, less of the time interval, less of the, less of the time of imaging and vice versa. So, so the pharmaceutical which we should be using for diagnostic study it must have a relatively short effective half life and and it should not be longer than the time required to complete the study in question 
Next is particle emission. So, uh, retinucleates which decays by emitting alpha or beta particles should never, never, never be used for diagnostic radio pharmaceuticals. And alpha emitters uh, should be used for in vivo diagnostic studies because they have uh, should never be used for in, in vivo diagnostic studies because they give a high radiation dose. Um, and alpha and beta particles are useful for therapy because of the effective radiation damage to the normal cells. And uh, and those nucleates which decays by electron capture isomeric transition, it, it emits the emission, it emits a gamma radiation. Uh, so whatever the mode of decay, so for diagnostic studies, the retinucleate must emit a gamma radiation with an energy preferably between 30 and uh, 300 keV. And uh, if the energy is less than 30, then uh, the tissue, then the all the gamma photons get attenuated by the tissue itself. And if the energy is more than 300 keV, then the um, uh, then the detector is unable to detect all the uh, gamma ray photons, so it leads to photon losses. And um, and at higher energy of photon, the, the 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 detector efficiency also drops. So and recently, manufacturers have made collimators for uh, uh, high energy, like 500 kV gamma ray photons of FDG, and which uh, have been used for planar or spect imaging of uh, using F18 FDG. So. And fourthly, what is more important is the high target to non-target activity ratio. And for any diagnostic study, it is desirable that the radio pharmaceutical to be localized preferentially to the organ under study and uh, uh, study. And since the activity from the non-target areas can obscure the structural details of the picture of the target organ. So uh, we can see over here that's the time window at which we have a higher um, uptick at the region of interest and a lower background rate. So that's the time frame at which we must study because we can get a good contrast between the object at the region of interest and your background. So that's the optimal time frame for static diagnostic imaging. And that's uh, the image of a new pharmaceutical um, called as gallium 68 um, FAPI or fibroblast activated protein inhibitors. And this can be used in about uh, for detection of 28 uh, cancer types from uh, breast cancer, uh, colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, and many more cancers. And with and it has a uh, it has a high target to non-target activity ratio. And this tracer is preferentially taken by the cancerous cells or cancerous uh, or, or by the tumor with minimal uptake by the background or um, with uh, by the background uh, uh, cells. So that's uh, about the different uh, uh, properties of the ideal radio pharmaceuticals. And uh, in the next video, we'll talk uh, more about the design perspective, how we design a radio pharmaceutical and, and their modes of uh, acquisition and many more things. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you um, want to see such videos more in future, please do subscribe to this channel. And thank you so much for watching.